Hey everyone, it's Fanola Howard and this is Ask Fanola How, episode 51. So on this glorious, glorious day, uh, this is a very interesting topic uh, because it's about content and content marketing. And the question has been, um, and this is really long, so uh, forgive me as I ramble, I want to make sure I pack enough in here, but also don't bamboozle you with stuff. So in all likelihood, there's more I could tell you about this process, but I want to keep it really simple for you so that you can grasp it, okay? So the question is, okay, you often talk about building a content process that converts, which I do, this is correct. How do I do that? Where do I start? So this, everything in marketing is about the customer. That's ultimately, it's about this interplay between who you are and who they are and where, you know, if you think when you did maths at school and you had that Venn diagram where there's two circles and where they overlap, you know, this, you know, where they overlap in the middle is this perfect point. This is what we do all through your marketing, okay? And it's that, you know, that thing of they, your customer has a challenge or has a pain point and you have the answer. And you have the answer that you deliver in your own unique way. So your content has to embody that uniqueness and their voice and your voice. And it is that dance between both parts. And a lot of stuff gets complicated along the way around what you should do and what you shouldn't do and formulas and things like that. When the real thing to remember is always, and I'm talking about this later as well because we have an upcoming webinar coming up. And my biggest message to everybody is, your marketing is your choice. So how you market is your choice, everything about it. So your content is also your choice. The thing is, that's one part of the puzzle, right? The other part of the puzzle is, it's also their choice too, your customer's choice. So you have to find a way, and it's not that you have to find a way, it's that you have to remember that you need to speak to them in a way that they can understand and a way that connects with them. And often if we're too much, it's re this is what's really interesting to me is often we don't listen enough to our own voices and often we listen too much to our own voices. And that is, so the first, and this is why it's always this interplay. So it is making sure that your voice, your uniqueness comes to the fore, unfettered, you know, truly you. And now if you can see on the trends on our other Instagram profile, which is at this is Fanola Howard. Uh, I've talked about the trends for 2022, which is authenticity and all of that. So this is the best time for you to be generating content that's unique to, to you and uniquely you, okay? So you start here. You start with your voice, your uniqueness, what you bring to the table in, that's in alignment with you. And then it's about their needs, what they want to solve in a voice that they can hear, that resonates with them, that shows them that you know who they are. That's what has to happen in your content, okay? So it has to connect one with you and two with them. And your product, your, your offering, has to form a straight line between those two things. That's what you're doing. The content is the piece in between you and them. And your product and your offering is a part of the journey. Your product, your content is actually individual moments of getting closer to your customer and getting your close to your customer so they can buy from you. So saying all of that, okay, is I always start when I'm thinking about content and I always start about finding something. So the, here's your thing. Find something that they want and that you love doing. You love creating for them. So in my case, and this is about doing some kind of investigation work. You know, what are the clues that they're giving you that they want to hear more about? What do they, what answers do they want? What is it that will connect with them, okay? And so in my case, I discovered, and that you want to deliver. So in my case, I discovered that my customers were telling, my customers were telling me that they wanted to hear more about my experience of working with different size companies and what have I discovered trends in the marketplace? What have I found out about stuff of all the people that I've worked with over years? What insights can I give to them based on all the work I've done over the years? 
and that was they wanted a greater depth there so and that meant we uh, that I released a podcast called your truth shared so that I could share that depth that experience those journeys of entrepreneurs who may be ahead of them or on the same level as them or even sometimes behind them but there's always insights it doesn't matter how long you're in business you always have value to bring to the table you always have a learning to bring to the table and that's why I made a decision that I wasn't only going to talk to people who were you know 30 years down and are multimillionaires and all of that we need to know that there's someone maybe just a little bit ahead of us so that we know that's that I can do that step I can get to there and then when we kind of have someone leading us a few steps ahead of us throughout our journey, it makes the journey easier, hence the podcast. And then there was Ask Vanola How came from people wanting to know how to do things, okay? What have you got that's like that? What is it your customers are saying to you that give you an insight uh, about content that they would like to hear more about or read more about that you could deliver in a way that makes you that's easy for you and enjoyable for you because when it's easy and enjoyable, you can do it consistently, okay? That's my first point. I have to go to my notes because I have so much to tell you on this. The other thing is, yeah, the other thing is don't forget to make sure because sometimes with all this talk of content marketing, there's a lot of kind of mindless content generation that doesn't connect to an offering. So the reality is, we produce content to build relationships, to nurture our relationships with our target customers so that we can, so they can get to know us, like us and trust us and, you know, start to work with us or start to buy from us. So that's the purpose of your content is to deepen your relationship with your customer so that you can better serve them. There needs to be that direct line between that nurturing and know like and trust to a specific offering otherwise you are on a hamster wheel generating content that doesn't deliver any results for you so that straight line you need to when you're thinking about what will i post today you need to say what or what will i batch this week for the next month is a better question how does that align with my calendar of what i'm promoting at particular times in the year what is the purpose this month of this, this batch of content I'm creating or that I'm committing to? What's that about? Have I, you know, have I connected the dots here? Or am I just mindlessly creating content in the moment? That's not strategic. That doesn't generate results. Connect the dots. Connect the dots in your calendar from what you're offering at different times of the year. Is there, is there a month where you are selling something. Is there two months where you're not and you can just deepen the relationship and learn about them better? Know the month and know the purpose of the month when you batch, you know, really connect into that. Still have this direct connecting this line of the purpose here in this batch of stuff I'm doing is, and even when you're batching, like I know in advance what I'm speaking about today, even though this is live, I know what I'm speaking about. Does it connect? Does it connect to where the journey that I want them to take with me? Does it make sense? Does it connect with where I'm wanting to serve my audience? As in the product I'm selling, because we're all selling something. Don't forget that. Don't let it be an engine that has no purpose. Yeah. Um, okay. Your story is also part of the equation, remember. So our offering is our... Um, our desire to serve our product is our, our, you know, meeting a need of a customer. And that is a specific box that needs to be ticked. So you will create content that directly addresses that. So if you know that you're in the leadership space and you are focusing on diversity, equality, inclusion, or if you sell hats for a living, you know that your content has to be around, you know, if you're doing, if you create beautiful hats, then you're going to show them how, how the hats are made maybe where the where you source, source the material, maybe your design process, all of that. That's a really important part of your content, but it's only one part. The other part is your story. And there's actually an episode coming up in the podcast about storytelling, which I think you'll really enjoy. But this story piece is where they get to know you 
and how you do business and what it would be like to buy from you. That's part of your content too. So we've got to create space around this. So we are, this whole thing is, you know, this idea of nurturing the relationship to a specific end point, remember. Nurture that relationship. So you're thinking about that when you create the content. The next piece that I kind of want to share with you is nobody goes, well, some people do, but conversion is not just the sale. Conversion is the steps on that relationship that are forming. So there is a conversion point in somebody watching a video. There's a conversion point. That's a conversion point. Someone downloading your email your, or giving you their email address. That's a conversion point. And when you think about that, you're thinking about, oh, OK, so I actually have to take my customer on a journey and each point on that journey as they get closer and closer and closer to me in that know, like and trust piece, as they get closer to where they put their hands in their pockets, to where they pay you, each point, that end point is not the conversion point. It's only one of them. So you have to remember that you should track every single one of those. So notice the conversion points and every one is a win and every one is a celebration. Every one of those single moments where the relationship deepens is a conversion point. And as you track that and you track it by what posts are resonating, what, who downloaded what, you know, what uh, lead magnet, does it work? You know, all of these things. And you've got to choose. So the key message here, so don't go off track, is this is a journey. There are points on the journey. Each point is a conversion point. Track it. Understand where they are at each point so that you can do more of that at each stage. They're all stages. So keep filling each stage so they neatly trip into the next and into the next and into the next until the end. And sometimes they'll come from over there and come in sideways, but you're still tracking that. You still need to look at your Google Analytics. You still need to look at your social media analytics that's available in your scheduler, even in, your, in the platforms themselves, like Instagram will give you insights. All of them will give you insights. Track that journey. And ideally, you're looking at some form of CRM system that can eventually, that will help you track the journey of each individual customer, each group of customers. So you know what your relationship is like. You're measuring the health of your relationship. And you'll know, oh, I see a pattern here with Mary. They have downloaded this, this and this. And I'm looking at their website and I can see, oh, they're actually ready for a rebrand on their site. You know, you're watching what's happening and you're really staying close to them and you're measuring at each stage. And that teaches you how your conversion process works because you're paying attention. It's not some mystery. We have so much tools, so many tools at our fingertips that demystify that whole selling process that will allow us to break it down and improve each point along the way. Use the tools, they're there for you. You have tools like a headline analyze, analyzer that will tell you, is your phrase in your blog clickable? Is, can we recognize the term, the keywords that you're using in here? Are people searching for that? Is that the answer? Have they downloaded the email? Did they get, uh, did they reach the thank you page here? Where are they on the journey? Everything can be measured. And it's not only for large companies. It is completely accessible, so use it. The other big thing to remember about converting a conversion process, this is the most important thing, and I say this all the time, which is really paying attention to your customers and customer profiling, because there's no point in you generating loads of people, adding them to your newsletter list, uh, and they'd be the wrong customers. So when you pick a lead magnet that's designed to pull people in, it has to be one, it has to be something they're interested in and it solves a problem and it has a kind of, you know, instant gratification feel to it, mostly. But it also has to be something that connects with your offering. So if they download that, 
Does that bring them closer to my product or my service? Does it connect? Like, so there's no point in you thinking about, oh, I'm going to show you how to produce great nail art if you're selling supplements for horses. I mean, I'm being extreme in the example, but we don't spend enough time real, really paying attention to what is the lead magnet that my end customer, my perfect customer, that it will help them, that it will nurture my relationship with them. Align that up because that increases your visibility. It allows you to really build a list that grows, allows you to create an audience and grow an audience because you're so connected to what they need that they are the right customers on the right track to closing and converting with you. Think about everything, how everything connects. And this is why I started with, and it's always starts with customers. It always starts with customers. That's the best message I can give you today. I hope that helps. Give me loads more questions. I love answering them. I'm here to serve. Help me serve you better. Have a wonderful day. Take care. This has been episode 51 from Ask For Know How. Take care.